Hi guys, this is Karthik. Welcome back to the channel. And guys, in this video, I'm going to discuss a nice coding problem that comes from Lead Code. It's a nice coding problem and it is based upon dynamic programming. I think it's quite popular, in fact, word break. So I found this nice resource from where we guys can actually find some good problems. This is a good resource which I'm going to share in the description. You guys can use it to solve some interesting problems, I would say. So this particular word break also comes from here. dynamic programming, word break, and then you go to lead code. Okay, so let's start solving this particular problem. And guys, you can read it on your own. I'll describe it anyway though, if you're, if you're too lazy, but still I recommend that you read it. So you're given with a string S and you're given with a dictionary. So the dictionary consists of valid words. What you want to do is you want to take this entire string, break it at certain points so that after breaking, your string consists, uh, the fragments are all valid words basically. And if you can do this, you have to say one uh, or true. You have to say true to lead code. Otherwise you have to say false. That's the entire problem. Take a string, try to break it into valid words and the valid words are defined by the dictionary given to you. So if you see the example number one, you have the string lead code. You have the dictionary with two valid words, lead and code. So of course you could break this string into fragments. One of the fragment would be lead, the other one will be code. Similarly, you have this apple pen apple, this particular string and you have this dictionary. So you can obviously break it into three fragments, obviously, right? So you'll say true. In the third example, you have this particular string and you can go ahead and try on your own, but in no way will you be able to break this particular string into fragments so that each and every fragment is a valid word. So you will say false. So that's the entire idea. Now guys, uh, how do we approach this kind of problem? One idea is that you try out all the possible fragments. You try out each and every way. So in one way, you could have the first fragment of size one and then try breaking the remaining string into all the possibilities. Second way is that the first fragment could be of size two and then you could try breaking the remaining string of length n minus two into all the possible fragments. And this is the way to approach it in a naive recursive way, right? But of course the complexity gets very, very high. What instead we'll do is that we'll use dynamic programming. So what I'll do is that if I'm trying to find whether this string is valid or not, or whether uh, the answer for this string is true or not, I would take a portion from the prefix, let's say the first five characters maybe, and maybe then these first five characters is a valid word in the dictionary. So I'll be happy about that. Now I just need to find out whether I can solve the same problem for the remaining n minus five length string. You, you can clearly see that your initial problem breaks down nicely into a sub problem and the sub problem is find out whether the remaining portion can be broken down into fragments so that each fragment is a valid word. So that's the entire idea guys. Here we can define that DP of maybe I can think about like since I'm trying to solve for the entire string that would be from zero till n minus one where n is the length of the string. So if DP of zero is one that means I can fragment the entire string into words. If DP of zero is zero that means false then i cannot so i could define dp of i equal uh, as can i take this entire string starting from the ith position till the n minus one -th position so that this particular substring from the ith till the n minus one -th string can be divided into fragments or not that's the entire idea guys so we have gone through the basic uh, let, let me just start coding it up and once i'm coding it you will be more clear about the idea right so I'm try currently trying to find out dp of uh, i. I'll say for every integer i and you can clearly see that to find dp of i you need to know the dp of i plus 1, i plus 2 so until dp of n minus 1. So I would like to evaluate these dpi's from right to left. Right. So I can say okay let me define integer n as s dot length. And I can say i goes from n minus 1, i greater than or equal to 0 and i minus minus. Uh, one more thing is that if I if I had an empty string then that is valid anyway, right? Be it's valid, it makes sense. If you have any doubt you can ask me in comment but yeah of course it's valid. So let me declare a dp array of size n and dp n plus 1 and i could easily say that dp at n equals to true
Now I'll try to do for the remaining string. So what I will be doing is that I will try to make a fragment starting from the ith position. I will try to take a substring and see whether this particular substring exists in my word dictionary or not. And how do I check the word dictionary? Either I iterate through all the words in the dictionary or I try to be a little bit smarter and actually put these words in a hash set. That that would be better. Or an unordered set probably. An unordered set of strings. And I could say dictionary. I guess I could initialize it smart in a smart way, but I don't know the syntax, so I'll just go for the old wood for loop mm, word word dictionary dict dot insert yeah so our dictionary is ready and now what i will be doing is that try to take a word from this position so int j equals to i j equal to i j less than of course n and j plus plus let's say that the current word that i'm trying to make is string word and i'll say okay word dot push back uh, s at uh, j and is the point is that this is a particular word if this thing exists in the dictionary i could check whether i could take the string from j plus one till <coughs> i'm sorry if I could take the string from j plus 1 till the end point, can I break that into fragments? If I can, then obviously dp of i becomes true. Because I could take this uh, fragment from i till j and from j plus 1 till n minus 1, I could break it. So that's why it's true. So here is what I'll check. If um, dictionary.find word is not equal to dictionary.end, this means it does exist in the dictionary then there is a possibility that uh, I found my answer. So I could say that if this is true, uh, this word exists and if dp of j plus 1 is also true, then that would mean that dp of i is true. And it, I could actually break out here, but uh, let it be. Who cares? Yeah, we're done. Uh, I, initially I should probably set all the values of this array to 0 so I can say mem set dp minus 1 size of dp yeah we are done guys so I guess now our answer should be at dp of 0 and I could simply return it mm. let me try this Yeah, it's, uh, it ran on this simple case. Okay, we're getting a wrong answer. Output was output is true, but they were expecting a false. Of course, the this has to be false. Okay, it's nice to have some debugging too. Let's see why is it wrong. I initialize it to minus one. That's not what I wanted to do. Initializing it to minus one now minus one is going to be casted to a bool. That's wrong Yeah, guys, we got an accepted verdict. So hopefully you liked the video and this was helpful to you Make sure that you like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye